Isn't he a servant? Man, what an illustration. That's cool. He's really awesome. It's a, a blessing to be here with you guys today. And uh, like Chad said, Christy and I have known Chad and Christy for quite a long time and have just uh, loved them, loved them dearly, and have seen God use them in, in some great ways. And uh, we were talking earlier, it was so cool that as God planted them here in Clarksville, Tennessee, and the work that they've been involved in, planting churches and planting this church specifically, and being able to stay updated and pray for you guys and not even know you. Isn't that good? That's the way God does things. So it's a privilege now to be with you here at the bridge and to also call it our home. So we, we don't take that lightly and it's, we're excited to be here uh, with you guys th- th- this morning. Everybody doing okay? Yeah. Doing all right? Okay. Just a, one more little setup thing here and then we'll, we'll, we'll get moving. Um, but yeah, lo- love it here um, and uh, we're getting used to it. We just moved from Arizona uh, back in September and uh, just getting used to the allergies and stuff here in Tennessee that we didn't have out there. Anybody with me? Anybody with me? That's why the water's here, just in case, so you, so you, so you know that. Um, but yeah, uh, and I'm praying about Antarctica. I'm not what, what, sh- what we could do, but uh, it's still on the list, and God's big enough to do something, isn't he? He's big enough, and if he calls us to that, we'll be, be ready to go. But uh, spiritual disciplines or habits, I want to start there this morning. Uh, those kind of things, that, that the spiritual habits, really help us increase the activity of God in our life, and that's really what we want, right? We, we want God to move in our life. There's, there's something in us that just wants to know that God is at work in here that he's alive and well in here, that he's changing things, that uh, he's transforming things. And we know that these spiritual habits, right, that are, are, are those things that we can do, uh, ways that we can cooperate with God and that put us in the best possible position to receive from God and to be transformed by God. Now, we know that spiritual habits themselves don't change us, but they put us in the best possible position to be changed by God and his spirit. That's what we do. And we talk about those things here. So we talk about reading the Bible and getting more consistent uh, in God's word, uh, you know, uh, so that we can know him better and that he can know us. And when you study God's word, uh, the activity of God increases in our lives. That's what happens as a result. Another spiritual habit is prayer. When we, we know that when we pray, we just sense God working in our life, and when we pray, our faith really does get personal. It becomes personal. But there's many of us, and I've been here, there's many of us that would still say that I, I don't necessarily sense the activity of God in my life. I want to know that God is working in me. Well, I think one of the reasons why we don't feel or sense the activity of God a lot of times in our lives is because we're not doing anything that requires it. We're not doing anything that requires it. So today we're going to talk about serving because I believe that there's something unique and powerful to know that God is working in me, right? Through serving. There's something about that. The spiritual habit, habit of serving. When we serve, our faith truly comes alive. It truly comes alive. So I'd like to talk about why you should serve. Why should we serve? Not as a church, but as an individual. How does God use serving in your life to transform you or to change you? So our text today is gonna be in Ephesians chapter four. If you wanna turn there or scroll there with us, some of the scriptures will be on the screen as as we continue. But we're gonna talk today about why you should serve others here and around the world. Ephesians 4 is where we'll be, starting with verses 11 and 12. And it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service. Now, the first thing I want you to see here is that it doesn't say, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to do the work of service. He said that our job as pastors and teachers and others is to equip who? His people for the works of service. The first reason I think you and I should serve is because this scripture tells us we've been called to serve. We've been called to serve. 
In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You and I have been created for ministry, to be a part of what God is doing to accomplish his purposes here in our world, to be on mission with him. And we, don't get an, and we don't get an understanding of this, really, of this invitation or the depth of that calling until you and I start serving. There's something that just happens when you're serving. You understand the depth of what that means. Not too long ago, I had a few friends traveling through the Holy Land in Israel, and I followed their journey on uh, social media, and I'm watching their pictures every day as they post, and they, were, they went to some amazing places over there. I remember seeing uh, their their posts uh, while they were in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then all of these these stories from Scripture started flooding my mind. uh, And I was thinking, there they are on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. And it made me think about Peter. You may know his story. Peter was called, Peter was with his brother Andrew and they were fishing, right? And Jesus calls out to them. He says, hey, listen, I know you're fishing out there and you guys are good fishermen, but listen, I want you to be a part of what we're doing, what I'm about to do to change the world, to change the world. And I want you to become fishers of men. And he called them into this ministry to be a part of what God was doing. And there was just something incredibly special about that moment. God chose, what did he do? Look at, look at what he did. God chose to use ordinary people to do the extraordinary work. And so Peter and all the disciples began to do what? They began to do ministry. They began to serve. Until you remember later on, right? They got to the Garden of Gethsemane later and Jesus was betrayed. That night he was arrested and then what? All the disciples scattered. They took off. And Peter specifically went into hiding. He went into hiding. And there were three different times, three different times that night that Peter had the opportunity to claim his relationship and his allegiance to Jesus. And he failed three different times. So you can imagine when Jesus is crucified, the guilt and the shame that he must have felt. Well, fast forward a couple of days, and Jesus is what? Resurrected, and he begins appearing to his disciples. And Jesus appears to them on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and Peter sees him, and he drops everything, and he sprints through the water out to see Jesus. And they went and had breakfast together around this this fire pit, and Jesus asked Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? I mean, look at all these guys around me. Do you love me? And Peter responds, he said, Jesus, you know everything. You know I love you. And this is what Jesus said. He said, I want you to feed my sheep. And three different times he said, Peter, do you love me? Then follow me. Then be a part of what I'm doing. Get back into the game. Get back into the game. Peter learned something very powerful and profound at that breakfast with Jesus that morning. It's one thing to be forgiven, one incredible thing to be forgiven, but it's a whole other thing to be wanted, to be wanted. And when you and I serve, we get to see and experience a whole other side of God's goodness and his grace in our lives. The fact is he doesn't just love you, he has forgiven you and he wants to use you. He wants to use you for his purposes. The reason I think you should serve is because we get a real deep understanding of God's goodness and his grace when he begins to use us. The second thing I see here is this, that you and I should serve because we've been equipped for it. We've been equipped for it. Look at uh, Ephesians 4, 7. It says, however, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ a special gift through the generosity of Christ. And here Paul, the writer of Ephesians, is talking about spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts. Now the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit brings about certain gifts into a follower's life. 
Once you said yes to Jesus, you surrender your life to Jesus, you become a follower of his, the Holy Spirit does this awesome work in your life and he gives you gifts. He gives you spiritual gifts. I wanna give you three things that I see here from this passage. This first one is this, you have a gift. If you're a follower of Christ, you have a gift. Could you do me a favor? Turn to your neighbor and say, you have a gift. Now turn to your other neighbor that you don't like so much and say, you have a gift. You have. In the first service, uh, a, fr- a, friend, a friend said, yeah, I turned to my daughter and I said, you have a gift. But then I turned to my wife and I said, I am your gift. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, I love that. I love that. This is pretty awesome. But <laughs> each one of us have a gift. And this is important because many people are a little hesitant about Um, you know, getting involved in ministry or serving others because we don't know that that, that we have everything we need. We don't know that we've got the tools if we're the right person for the job, if we've got what it takes to be part of ministry, serving others. But here's the deal. If you're a believer in Christ, he has gifted you for ministry. He has equipped you to do what he's called you to do. And this is significant because you may not think it and you may not feel it, but God's gifted you. He's given you a gift to be used to accomplish his purposes. The second thing here is he's not only giving you a gift, but he is the one that gave it to you. God gave it to us. It says he has given us, each one of us, a special gift. Now, the reason I want to highlight this is because one of the tendencies or temptations that we have a lot of times is when we're considering our gifts, we tend to diminish what we've been given. And we look at others that are incredibly successful in ministry or serving others, and we say, I I don't know that I've got that gift. I don't know that I can do what they do. And so we diminish the gifts that God has given to us, even though he's probably gifted you differently. You know, there's a lot of other gifts that God has given and he's given them to you and you're not to diminish them, but to use them. We're to use them. And I think we have a complete misunderstanding of what it means to have a spiritual gift sometimes. God gave it to you and God empowers the gift. J.I. Packer wrote a long time ago, he's a great man of God, uh, theologian, pastor, writer. He says this about our gifts. He says, we need to draw a clear distinction between man's capacity to perform and God's prerogative to bless. For it's God's use of our abilities rather than the abilities themselves that constitutes a spiritual gift. Which essentially means that when God gives you a gift, he empowers your gift as well. It's not about your abilities. I remember when I first started out uh, in in ministry, this was before seminary, I was working with a group of students, I was a young guy, and uh, we were at camp, and this kid came up to me, and he was like, I've got all these questions, I've got all these spiritual questions, will you help me, will you help me? And again, a young, inexperienced guy, uh, we met together, I didn't know all the answers. Sure, I was passionate and available and wanted to be there for him, so, so I went and I sat down and we started this conversation. And I started trying to find the answers to all the questions that he had, fumbling through the Bible, you know, oh, I, I know it's in here somewhere, give me a second, you know, those, those kind of things, searching and just, just hoping that this would turn out <laughs> well. Um, and I, I did all that, and then I noticed, all of a sudden, he's looking, he's looking up and he's got tears in his eyes, he's just crying, and, and he looks to me and he says, I think I know what I need to do. I'm ready to receive Jesus into my life. Can you tell me how to do that? So there again, I was like, oh, I I know this, I know this. We'll we'll talk about it. Let me share it. Let me share it with you. You Some fumbling around again. But in the end, he prayed and he surrendered his life to Jesus. And his life was forever changed. And later I was thinking, you know, I don't know how in the world God used that. (laughs) But I'm in. (laughs) Let's go, go, let's go, Lord, let's do this, let's do this. You see, you see, it's not the quality of the gift, it's the power of the gift giver. He's the one that's behind it. He empowers it as well. Remember in Ephesians 2, chapter two, it says you are God's handiwork, you're his creation. 
think about this. It means that when he created you, he had good works prepared for you to do, meaning he had things, a ministry, a service in mind for you to be a part of. He had someone, a person, or a group of people that he had created. And when he was creating you, he said, I've got just the people, the people group for them to go to. I've got just the person that they're gonna impact one day. And when he created you in such a way with certain gifts and abilities and talents, talents and personalities and experiences that you have, God formed you together. God formed you together because there was something unique about God that he wanted to reveal through you. And when you and I don't serve, and when you and I don't exercise our gifts, there's an angle on God that our entire church, our world misses out on because the gifts that he's given you, he's given to you. And there's only one way that those gifts can be exercised. It's through your life. It's through our lives. And if you don't exercise them, we miss a whole angle on God. You and I should exercise our gifts. Last thing here is that our gifts are meant to be used. They're meant to be used. Recently, uh, my wife and I uh, needed to upgrade our cell phones. Has anybody been there, done that? You know, it's not a fun experience, you know, when it comes to that time when your battery starts dying, you do, oh, memory's out, you gotta upgrade, you know, go from an iPhone two to finally an 11. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, that's a big jump. But uh, we, we needed to do it, so we ordered them right, we ordered them, uh, they arrived, and ever since then, they've been sitting on a table. It's just crazy. They're still in their nice little box that we got and they're, they're sitting there on the table, boxed up and just waiting for someone to unleash the power, uh, the powerful potential that sits in that box, right? Um, unfortunately, we just haven't had the time to sit down and to take care of it and she's in this room right now. Please forgive me, baby. I'm sorry. I'll get to it, I promise. Um, but we haven't had time to do that and we haven't had time to start using all that powerful potential that's, that's in that box. It was created to be used in a certain way we have them, but we just don't use them. And I mean, there's a lot of power there, right there in those boxes. And if we don't use it, we'll never know. We'll never know. And when, we look at, when I look out at this crowd and looked at the first service this morning too, I see a lot of potential in this room. God has blessed you and given you unique gifts that he intends for you to use. And if you use them, guys, we can do some serious things for the kingdom of God, can't we? I just know it. This isn't gonna happen unless we start using the gifts that he's given to us. You and I should also serve because it's one of the primary ways that God grows our faith. One of the ways uh, that we're going to grow is through serving. Look at the next passage in Ephesians 4, verse 12. It says, you've been equipped so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Essentially, what this passage is saying is that ministry and maturity are inseparably linked. I said it. <laughs> They're linked. They're linked together. That if we wanna grow in our faith, then we better serve in our faith. If you wanna grow spiritually, then service must be a part of your, of your life. The way that you and I grow is by serving. The way that we attain maturity is by doing ministry. And that's what God wants for each and every one of us if you're a follower, follower of Christ. Not too long ago, the first of March, this church, this very generous church and very mission-minded church sent a group of eight to Guatemala. And I am a little bit better at geography than Chad lets on. I'm just, I'm working, you know. But <laughs> we're gonna get there. Um, but Guatemala was a great experience. You, you sent a team of eight that went down with a ton of supplies, necessary supplies, so, so that uh, the missionaries there could actually uh, meet the needs of uh, moms who were expecting babies, who had already had babies, but these are young moms, and they need all the help they can get. The government's not very helpful there, and in the community where they live, there's no clinic. So the, uh, the missionary wife, she helps that part of it, and the husband, he helps lead 
uh, building homes, getting them off, off the dirt and out of shacks into a better living condition so that they can have a, a proper stove and things can be better for them and uh, they can raise healthy children and just have better lives. But in the process of all of that, there are opportunities while you're there to, to, to prayer walk and ask God to, to intervene and to take down strongholds in families' lives. There's opportunities where the women loved on the kids and loved on the moms and the grandparents that were there and uh, shared the love of Christ just by being present and giving things to the kids. And, the, and there were opportunities when the men and finally the women got, got together at one location and built a house together. It was really cool to see that happen and that take place in the process, pray with people uh, through, through an interpreter and then also um, share the love of Christ, the message of the gospel in their language. It was amazing to be a part of that. And you church sent this group and it was an amazing group of followers who made themselves available to go and sacrifice a week away from family and jobs to be the hands and feet of Jesus in Guatemala. There was something happening that could only happen when these team members from the bridge took their faith and they put some feet on it. And they started using it and living it out in a hurting part of the world located just south of us in Guatemala. There's something unique and special that happens when God's people serve. This is a passage that I thought of honestly when I was sitting there and had opportunities to kind of step back and just watch the team in action and see them serve and love on people and do their thing with the gifts that God has given them. It was just amazing. And see all this transpire in verse 14 and 15 of chapter four in Ephesians, it says, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies. So clever, they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ. Amen. And I just want to say, at various moments, I looked at our team members and thought, these guys look like Jesus because they're serving. They're serving. There's something unique that happens when you serve others for Jesus. It creates a dependency like we've never had before because you begin doing things that can only be accomplished by the Spirit of God through you, and you realize that you desperately need to know the Word, and you desperately need to pray, and you desper desperately need the power of God to move on your behalf. There's just something unique and powerful that happens when you and I serve. As followers of Jesus, we've been called to it, and there's a depth of, gra of the grace of God that you'll never understand unless you serve. We've been equipped to do it and we will never understand the unique ways that God has equipped us and blessed us until we start exercising some of those gifts. And if we wanna grow and get deeper in our relationship with Jesus, then we better find a personal ministry. Find a place where you can exercise those gifts because it's one of the primary ways that God stirs our heart and deepens our faith. So the question is, how do you get started? How do you get started? First thing I suggest is pay attention. Pay attention to the promptings of God in your life because I believe that God is going to lead you to the place he wants you to serve. I remember being in college and attending a weekend uh, missions conference with hundreds and hundreds of students, uh, all pretty close to the same age. God used the speakers that weekend. I didn't go with any expectations, but he used the speakers and conversations with missionaries from all around the world that weekend to prompt me to be available to go. Just be available to go on mission and reach other parts of the world for Jesus. The need was great. The need still is. I just sensed God directing me, saying, you gotta check that out. I took a step in faith and I did it and I am in a totally different place because of it. So pay attention, pay attention to the promptings of God. And then another thing, test drive, test drive. Check out the opportunities here at the bridge. Step into a serve role and see if it fits. Sit in and take a test drive 
and see if it, it might be a fit for you. The same thing goes with all of our ministry partners. I don't know if you know this, but we have quite a few ministry partners that the Bridge partners with here in Clarksville. It's amazing. I'm still trying to wrap my brain around all of them and how we can help each and every one of them. It's really cool. Some of them are on our website, some of them are not. There's opportunities there to go and to serve with our friends we support who are already making, making a difference on the ground here in Clarksville. Also, just be ready. Make yourself available to be used by God to take part in reaching others in his name, in this world who need to hear the name of Jesus and how much he loves them. Step into it with faith. You won't be dissatisfied. There are ways, these are the ways where you can just, just really get your feet wet. Because when you do, you'll get a sense that, wow, I think God is calling me to be a part of something that's much bigger, a lot bigger than me. I can tell you it's humbling. It's a humbling experience when that happens. You begin to discover that God has gifted you and he wants to use you. And there's something unique that God, God wants to do through your life. And I'm telling you, your faith is going to become deep and strong. So that's why I think you should serve. That's why I think we should serve because when we serve, our faith truly comes alive. In Mark chapter 10, we see a conversation take place between Jesus and a few of his disciples, James and John. They asked Jesus if one of them can sit at his right hand and the other at his left hand in his new kingdom. Now in the gospel of Matthew, it adds that uh, it was the mother of, <laughs> that stepped up to Jesus and asked this. How many of you are moms? You'd do anything for your kids, wouldn't you? <laughs> you just would. They even ask a question like this. We get to celebrate you guys next week. This is gonna be cool. Um, but he, this is their question. Can one of us sit at your left hand, one of on your right hand in your new kingdom? Well, after a little bit of a conversation, he draws all the disciples together and he closes out with these statements in uh, Mark 10, uh, 43 and 45, he says, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. You wanna be great? Be a servant. In verse 45, he says, for even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is our example, the greatest example. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. We see through the gospels, the powerful acts of service of Jesus as he was walking around and showing God's love in a practical way, a bunch of practical ways, and what? Just being a servant to others. But it didn't end there. You see, he came to be a servant and to the point, and, and to point to the what? The ultimate act of service that he would do, which was dying on the cross and to forgive the sins of humanity so that everyone who would accept him could be with him for eternity. My prayer and hope for all of us is that we can be great for Jesus by being a servant, by humbling ourselves as he did and becoming a servant, a servant to our family, a servant to our church, a servant to our neighborhoods, a servant to our community, a servant to our city, our workplaces, and our world, and our world. Let's pray together. God, we're so grateful that you would call us, that you would want to use us. God, we feel and sense our unworthiness, but holy God, it's amazing that you've even chose us chosen us and chosen us, God, to be a part of what you're doing in this world, to impact lives and to make a difference for Jesus. Jesus, please give us the courage to take that next step, whatever that might be, it might be to start a relationship with you, surrender our lives and say yes to Jesus or just be available to go and serve. Lead us in the direction you want us to go. We love you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.